all my crafty friends, it's Beverly here over at Crafting Chaos and today I'm here with you to show you how to make some fake embellishments if you will for your card making and scrapbooking um, and today we're going to concentrate on buttons so so that they have a realistic look and they have a trim so they've got the holes and the trim and you can stack different layers of cardstock up to make them look thicker and actually like buttons so this is what we're aiming for so I'll move that off to the side and we'll get started. Incidentally, the file will be available over on my blog at beverly10.blogspot for free download when the video is live on YouTube. So feel free to go over there and download it if you don't want to have a go at making it yourself. However, this is a very simple um, tutorial and I'm sure everybody will be able to achieve this. All right, so we're going to start off with the simplest shape, which is the circle. So I'm just going to bring on the circle shape, just a bog standard one. And we're going to leave it as is size wise. I'm going to make a duplicate so you can either right click, sorry, right click and say duplicate. Or you can go layer and duplicate. Or in my case, I've made a shortcut command in D because for some reason it wasn't available as a shortcut. Again, I'm going to repeat that step so I've met for a total of three circles. So I'll pick one circle, it doesn't really matter which one, and we're going to create an offset. So we need the second button down in the edit menu, go down to offset, I want it to be set on inward, round, and I'm going to make it 0.5 inches. So 0.5 and say OK. Now what that will have done is created an offset for us at 0.5 inches and we're going to then select both of those and hit process overlap within the same edit menu and subtract. So now effectively that's punched the hole out of the centre of that. So if we now flood that with colour you can see that we're left with this like sort of ring shape. So that would be the trim for our button here. So next we're going to make the button holes and what I'm going to do here is I'm going again to shrink this down to 0 0.5 inches which I think is roughly the right size for this size of a button. Now to make this easier to line up you need to go on this artboard menu so we're going to go to the fourth icon down which is the artboard here and we're going to go click this one which says snap to grid and I'll show you what that does when we get to it. Now you've got a choice of changing the grid and if you look as I move up the squares on the screen here are getting bigger or smaller. Now I'm going to take it right down to 0.25 inches and I'm going to zoom in so you can see what's happening. So we'll just zoom in a little bit more on that circle that we're working on. And we're going to take a duplicate of that, so you're either right clicking and duplicate, layer and duplicate, or you can make your own shortcut. Now, when we move that around now, instead of it just moving a little tiny bit, it's snapping to the grid. So what that means is the size of the side of this shape is lining up to the grid line here. So if we start with that one snap to grid there, we can bring this one across. And we now know that those two shapes are exactly um, level with each other and that distance apart, which will be about half of an inch. So we're going to layer and we're going to group. So we've grouped them together. So we did layer and group. So then we need a duplicate of those, whichever is your preferred method. And again, we're going to use the snap to grid and we want that same gap in between those two so now we've got four perfectly lined up circles and we're going to layer and duplicate now that takes out the guesswork of it and i'm going to just group that one and go back and group this one i could have done that before i duplicated and saved that step but there we have it now so we're going to display zoom to fit to the mat size so now we've got our four holes if you will for our button now if you feel now that they're too far in what you can do then is it now we know that they're all equidistant from each other we could just slightly shrink it down a little bit and then we can select I'm not going to do that by the way I'm just going to undo that so I'm quite happy with the size that they are I don't want them to get too small so I'm just going to leave them like that 
I'm going to bring them onto my button, I'm going to select everything and I'm going to line them up using the edit menu on the centre and middle. So now those holes, if you will, are in the middle of that button shape. So then we need to select both of those shapes and then on process the overlap we're going to hit subtract. So that's effectively punched out those holes from the button. So if we now go back into our colour so I can put some colour in, you can see that that's how we're at. So now I'm going to arrange, bring to the front and then we can stack one on top of the other. So you've got a trim, you could have your plain button underneath or you could have it with a trim on top which we're now obviously just going to do that for the sake of the video so you can see that's the effect we're getting. Now remember it's your choice if you wanted to add an offset you could go um, offset inward by a small amount to say okay that will give us an insert on make it a dash line or a drawing line whichever just to fancy the buttons up a little bit if you wish um, that's another thing that you can do and I'll just if I just take the color of that one down a little so you can see what color it's actually at oh well, that's a bit too bright so we'll go with that one so that's where you get the stitching so I'm just going to undo that so you can see that now you would get that four stitching on there okay so that's one way of doing it now you can see the stitching's there if I move it away so I could now, I want to try and get the one underneath, so I'm going to click on these, I'm going to hide that one, I'm going to group those two together because now that's got the stitch in, and I'm going to layer and group. So now I can move that one independently, and so you can see the colours, I'll just fade down the colour a little bit into something not quite so bright maybe then you'll be able to see the colours a bit better so there you go you can see the stitching is there I'm just going to undo that and leave it as is I've lost my other button part now where's that gone let's just undo if this happens you've always got your your best friend which is your undo button oh I know why we couldn't see it it's because I'd hidden it in the layers so if we go back to layers it's now visible again but I think we've probably ungrouped that one so I'll again hide it then I'm going to select the two of those, I'm going to line them up centrally and vertically, I'm going to group them and then remembering now that they are, if I've unchecked the view icon here, put the eye back on, we can see that part and we're going to line them up to the middle and centre. So that's how we create the round button. Now if you would like to make a different shape, so this daisy shape, what we're going to do this time is we're going to bring on a scallop circle. Now I brought on this one, left it size as is, I'm going to make a duplicate of those, so I've got one for my next button. I'm going to make a duplicate of the daisy. I'm going to bring these two together, selecting both and centre and middle, and we're going to make sure they're both selected and put up. Oh, if that happens, all that meant was is that instead of the circles being on top, it's actually the big shape. So all you need to do in that case is have that one selected, say arrange centre back. So now when we click here, you can see now they're on top. And if we repeat that procedure, subtract, then it's going to punch them out. So the next thing we're going to work on is the trim for that button. So again, we're going to create an offset inward and we're going to go in by about... 0.5 say ok we're going to select both and subtract and now we can select that one we'll give it some colour we'll go with a lightish pink and we'll make this a darkish a darker colour just to show the trim and again we're going to using our edit menu centre and obviously you'd have them separate when you're cutting them if you were cutting them in two different colours but just to get the effect that you're going to see finally the heart shape button what I'm going to do is I'm going to select the heart and it's the most plain simple heart that there's the choice of and I'm going to ungroup those because I think it will be too much and I'm going to ungroup that pair 
because I'm a little bit, I think we could have done to have been a little bit closer together. So I'm going to move those two closer together and we're going to group. Now you could set off with them if we ungroup that layer, ungroup. If you prefer that spacing, that's absolutely fine because you could use, oops, excuse me, well I just try and select the four of those now, layer and group. You could have used that spacing where there's just half an inch between each of the squares and then your holes would have been nearer the centre, which I think I used for this one. So that's fine, you'll have the choice and I'll save both to the file. So then this time we're going to take a duplicate of the heart. I'm going to ungroup those because I only need two. I'm going to select the two, position them where I like them on the heart, and I'm going to select both, but this time we only want to align them to the centre because we don't want it to centre it necessarily between this one and this one because it might be too low and it might not be pleasing to the eye. So then I'm going to select both and sub up. Oh, again, if that happens, use your undo button. And again, it just means that instead of the circles being on top, the heart is. So we're going to arrange and center back. Then we're going to select both again and process the overlap and subtract. Okay, so that's dealt with that. Finally, to make a offset for that one, we're going to go inward, say OK. We're going to select both and press process the overlap subtract. Let's give them both a little bit of colour so we can see what we've got. So we'll make that one red and this one a deep red. And if we select that one as well, so we've got both of them selected and we line them up central and vertical, we've now created our buttons and we can delete those. So if I bring the ones that I'd already made onto the desk to onto the mat, so you've got but two versions really of the same button now, some of them slightly different and it depends on your um, how much offset you create and so on as to how your button's going to look when it's complete. Now, so that's how you would make um, the basic process of making the buttons. Obviously, you can make the buttons any shape you wish. If you want to make a hexagon button, you would just follow exactly the same steps that we've shown you with this one, except using the hexagon. So we'll just quickly do it once more so that you've got the idea of it. So I'm just going to undo. There's our two. I've just gone back so that we've got our holes. I'm going to duplicate those and I'm going to line them up where I think they're pleasing. I'm going to have them there and I'm going to group them. Layer and group. I'm going to go back to there, bring on the hexagon. I find it. Here we go. This uh, The octagon, shall we do? We'll do the octagon. I quite fancy that one. So we'll do the octagon and we'll... So the first step is... Just get this one out of the way. And can work on the octagon. First step, duplicate. Second step, line up your holes in your button where you would like them to be, making sure that the holes are on top and if they're not, send the big shape to the back, then select both and subtract. Then with the octagon, the second one selected, go to the offset in the edit menu think I'm going to do this one 0.4 just a smaller offset than the last one I'm going to say okay I'm going to select both process the overlap and subtract click on the paintbrush we're going to give it some color so we'll maybe go on this one and this one's going to be that color and maybe that color maybe it shows up better with that color and again all you would do then just to get an idea of what it's going to look like when you've cut it is line them up centrally and vertically. So I'll include that one as a bonus. Now, if you want to resize it at the moment, that button's about four inches, which is fine. But supposing that you want it to be smaller, you just need to group them temporarily, shrink it down, but be mindful of how small these holes are getting. So I'm going to layer and ungroup. Because if you go too small, 
your machine might struggle to actually cut the hole. And now if I zoom in and we sort of hover over, at the minute those holes are slightly less than a quarter of an inch. So we could go a bit smaller but I wouldn't necessarily go much less than about an inch. If you wanted to go smaller than an inch, what you would need to do is make sure that the holes that you create at the centre are bigger to start with because you don't want to put that sort of stress on your blade. Okay, so there are two our files, how to make the button. Um, like I said, it's not a difficult um, tutorial, but it just occurred to me that often we use buttons for our projects, and I know I use buttons on my projects, particularly on my scrapbooking pages. Um, and sometimes it's difficult, even though I've got quite a button stash, it's sometimes difficult to find one in the perfect colour that matches your project. Now, this is a way around it that you could actually create your own size buttons stack them up and um, the paper so they look nice and thick like a thick embellishment you could even then cover the tops with glossy accents which would make them look shiny if you wish you could also cut them out of um, patterned paper which could be quite pretty and you may not need the trim then you could just cut out the basic button shape and layer that one up in um, white card and then use your nice paper on top that matches your project okay so that's it from me if you've enjoyed the video please like share and subscribe um, leave comments in the comment box below um, I'll try to remember to leave a link to my blog where you can download the file in the comments below but remember to tell your friends where to find me I'm always happy to have new viewers and obviously new people hopefully learning how to use the scan and cut machines using canvas workspace and getting the most from the machines that they possibly can all right so thanks for watching and i'll see you next time bye